We just watched Independence Day from the 90s. What do you think? 10 out of 10. It is America and sci-fi and welcome to Earth. The ID4 is an emotional roller coaster that has the greatest stakes that humanity has ever encountered. The F-18, the Black Knights, and Matthew Genius to save the day twice. And a single veteran father that reconnects with his with his children and in front of his country. This is... It, it has a marriage. It has a marriage between a fighter pilot and a stripper and a re- rekindling of lots love. This has this is all the emotions that I want to feel. Excellent movie. 10 out of 10. One of my faves. How did you like it? Uh, I give it a 9 out of 10. It is also one of my all-time faves. I can't give it a perfect score, so 9 out of 10. It's up there. One of my favorite all-time. It's such a great ride. The highs, the lows, the highs, the lows. So much nostalgia. So many great characters. The nerdy guy, the fighter pilot, the president, the alcoholic father. So many classic moments. The speech. The the attack on the cities with the... You know, the triumph at the end. Feels great. I think it's one of the best, I guess, Friday or Saturday movies ever. So, Excellent. yeah, 9 out of 10. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So, this is the very beginning of the movie. They noticed that the signal is coming from the moon. Wait, wait, this can't be right. The calculated distance from source is only 375,000 kilometers. It's coming from the moon. So I think like NASA and other space agencies have telescopes looking around the solar system all the time. And something this big would have been noticed before it got to the freaking moon. Uh, so does that mean they have stealth check, the aliens? I think so. Because, so I guess my first thought is it's pretty dark in space. How are you going to see stuff? But at the distance of, if something's at the distance of the moon, then it's getting enough reflected light both off the sun mm-hmm. um, or even just off the earth or even off the moon that we mm-hmm. should be able to see it. I think that means there's some type of stealth tech because it's able to be mm-hmm. dark, dark when it should have reflections. Right, so it came into the solar system without reflecting much light at all. So we couldn't see it until it was like right on us. Right. In fact, they can never really get a good image of it, which is kind of weird. It's kind of kind of consistent with stealth tech. Stealth tech, yeah. Yeah. This is still also in the intro when, when the general calls out for the secretary. Total nerd fantasy. It's what? It's, uh, it's slowing down, sir. Get me the Secretary of Defense. Then wake him! Total nerd fantasy to have something so important that it's like, then wake him! Even if it's something, like, not so high stakes as aliens, total nerd fantasy. Love it. Yeah, it would be nice, like, in, in real life to be like, this is so important. Call the President. Call the Secretary of Defense. Get, interrupt him. Wake him. Whatever. Okay. Even the, heck, even the mayor of the town, like, then wake That's him. That's true. Like, That's true. Still feels so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is the images. They can't, I guess, the, the the mothership and I don't know what this is. The baby motherships? Baby motherships, maybe. They can't get a good image of it. This is consistent okay. with the aliens having some kind of crazy stealth tech where we can't even get a good image of it when it's cl- as close as the moon. That's right. Like At, at that distance, backyard telescopes should be able to look at it. Right, but like we're easily. here with the, all the military tech, mm-hmm. they still can't get an image of it. Right. And here's the nerd people in the, I don't know, the very large array. Here's the Earth. I guess, I don't know what this is. Is this coming out of the plane of the ecliptic? I don't know what this is. So my thought was this is the signal coming from the moon. Mm -hmm. However, the moon should be closer to the equator of the Earth. It should not be way up there. It should be in this plane. Right. Not way up here. I don't know what that is. Mm. Maybe maybe the the alien craft came in uh, away from the ecliptic to hide from our sensors. And when they said the signal is coming from the moon, they did they really mean the moon? No, they showed a shadow of it with the moon. So it wasn't just moon distance. It was actually next to the moon. Mm. So, yeah, I'm not sure what this means here. No idea. Maybe this is the alien's path. They come in perpendicular to the plane of the solar mm-hmm. system, and then they swing around the moon to okay. slow themselves to reach the planet. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. I guess this is the alien craft here, and this is the moon, so mm. roughly moon distance. Okay. So maybe they, they here's the plane of the galaxy, uh, plane of the solar system, where most mm-hmm. species will probably be looking because yeah. that's where objects are in space. Mm-hmm. And so then they approach from a perpendicular vector, so it's yeah. out of our yeah. eyesight, and they pull up behind the moon plus mm-hmm. stealth tech. They would be a very invisible right. mama ship. I like that. And then we're probably not looking so much at yeah, the plane, so it just comes out of nowhere. Right. Holy crap. Yeah. More information about how maybe this stealth tech works. Let's look. Sir, we're looking at a total radar blackout over a 13 kilometer area. The radar may be... So this guy here, if you look at this radar screen, sweeps 
and this whole this whole section here is just black. I think if it wasn't stealth, it would actually be a heavy emitter because all that radar going out would reflect off the big ship, come back and be an extremely strong signal. The fact that there's no signal, I think that means stealth tech. So you're saying there's like that dark section of the circle yeah. Yeah. and if it was an emitter, so it was like if light hit it and bounced off, mm -hmm. you'd see a super bright ring just like outlining. I think so. Yeah. I see, I see. So the fact that it's dark, it's like disappearing. Right. means any, any radio waves that are coming out, they're completely just absorbed, absorbed, which means we never see the reflection. That's right. Yeah, that's got to be stealth. Got to be stealth, right? Got to be stealth. Yeah. Area. The radar may be malfunctioning, but the infrared is totally off the map. And then what what is that telling us? Is the the ship is emitting an IR? Is that what that means, or is that a hole in IR? So I I mean the color scale is whatever they set their color scale. Sure. I don't mm -hmm. know in a submarine maybe they do weird mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but the way I interpreted this was the blue is like sky. Mm -hmm. And so that's just whatever the temperature is of the sky. And so they mm -hmm. said like, well, let's call that blue. And then I think the the baby motherships, mm -hmm. they're coming in hot. They're, they're just hot. Oh, okay. So it's just because of atmospheric reentry at this point. Mm -hmm. It's hot. Okay. Yeah. I, I, that makes sense. So it's still, it's still absorbing radar, but it's now emitting quite heavily in IR because it just re-entered the atmosphere. Right. Okay. That sounds Infrared's good. the hot part of the spectrum. Right. Jeez. Jesus, indeed. Yeah, the Atlantic command, that, that same commander, he gets on the phone right away. But the infrared is totally off the map. Get me Atlantic command on the line. Can you imagine if they're sleeping? Well, then he has to wake him up. <laughs> totally nerd fantasy. I would do that. Regardless of what the other person said on the line, I'd be like, wake him up. <laughs> I mean, it's a crazy situation. If, if, how could they not be awake at this point? It's crazy. <laughs> I want I want a shot for shot remake where everyone they call is just asleep, <laughs> including that guy's lawyer. Yeah, yeah. So also airborne, we see this fog of war, this fog mm -hmm. of warship. Let's see what they see from the president's perspective. Side radar doesn't yes, see a thing. Correct. Nothing is registering. We have zero visibility. Captain, the president is listening. Repeat what you just told me. So at this point, that AWACS, that ship with the satellite dish, mm -hmm. is, on, is flying through this cloud. And so my thought was, is is it a cloud? Because if it's a cloud, like like we here now humans can fly through clouds. We just use different frequencies to just mm -hmm. see right through them. So if this ship, which is, I assume it has even better communication technologies than commercial planes, mm -hmm. if they can't see through this, what is this cloud? Mm -hmm. So visible makes sense. It's a cloud, can't see through it. Fine. But then they say radar is acting like it's malfunctioning. And radar can go through clouds? Radar can go through clouds. I think it may reflect off clouds in some frequencies, but I don't think you'd have zero visibility like like in this. Yeah. So my my hunch was, is this like a a metal cloud? Like a metal flake cloud? Because like metals absorb all the whole bunch of frequencies. Let's listen again. I think that sounds plausible. Side radar doesn't see a thing. Side radar doesn't see a thing. So that's consistent with a metal cloud. Like they can't, just right. nothing. They're, they're sending out radar frequencies and just dispersed. It's gone, never it's gone. bounces back. Never bounces back. Just Which means whatever it hit, absorbed it. Absorbed it, complete absorption. Yeah. Nothing is registering. Nothing is registering. Yeah. Just nothing, just, that's seeing, nothing. just yeah. seeing nothing. We have zero visibility. Okay, that's visible light, zero visibility. That makes sense, it's a cloud. Captain, the president is listening. Repeat what you just told me. Instrumentation is malfunctioning. It actually could be functioning properly. Right. They're just inside a metal cloud. Right. They think it's a water cloud, but actually it's little metal particle flakes mm -hmm. that the aliens sent out in front of their ships so that you can't see them. Yeah. Cool. Cool technology. Yeah, cool. Aliens are scary. This was interesting. This makes me question the president's decision to stay in the White House. And what happens if they do become hostile? And God help us. So if the aliens become hostile, He's saying, God help us, which means he's going to die. So why not be a safe out on Air Force One or somewhere in a bunker so they can fight back? That's right. He's not saying, he's not saying like, oh, then we go to plan B or we go to, like, he's saying like, God help us, like hands up in the air. Right. Mm -hmm. Then he's also, they're also, he's also spanking on the aliens being friendly, in which case being on Air Force One is not a big deal anyway. Yeah. So 
I think the move is you got to go. You got to go. And I don't think the public would panic either because they would expect the president to go to a safe place. Right. In right. fact, I would be upset if he wasn't going Actually, to a safe I place. Would be, yeah. yeah, I would be too. I don't want like the president dying, the whole cabinet dying. Eventually, like the president, or the, the the secretary of education becomes like the president. That'd Have you seen that weird. show? What? Have you seen that show? What show? The uh, the show with Kiefer Sutherland. What oh, he... Succession. Six... No, is that what it's called? I think I can't so. remember the name. I was doing Battlestar Galactica, President uh... Laura Roslin. Okay, that's true. Battlestar Galactica as well. But there's also a show in modern U.S. Uh. with Kiefer Sutherland. Is like this. I think he's the secretary of education. Was oh, he really? He might be. What a coincidence. And then everybody gets killed and he becomes He's president. president. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see. Okay. <laughs> Two references. Mm. 90s. 90s. Fruitopia. That was a fun drink. Fun drink. And I, I, I think I got marketed as a kid. I thought it was healthy, but actually it's just kind of sugar water. Oh, no. <laughs> it was super unhealthy. But I, did, I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know I only learned that later on. Oh, fruit juice? Uh, fruit. It's a real fruit beverage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. The nineties are wild times. Yeah. Let's listen to Levinson talk about his countdown and its analogy to chess. I tell you that the signal hidden in the satellite feed is slowly recycling down to extinction. Countdown. Countdown. We're gonna count down to what, David? Oh, it's like in chess. First, you strategically position your pieces, then when the timing's right, you strike. See? It's in approximately six hours. The signal's gonna disappear and the countdown's gonna be over. And then what? Checkmate. Oh my god. Oh my god, I gotta call my brother. I better call my housekeeper. I gotta call my lawyer. Uh, forget my lawyer. <laughs> Well, this always struck me as like nobody the, all these ships are coming down positioning themselves over ma major cities and everybody's like oh there's a they could attack really countdown to what i don't know could they be right. hostile like right. is it not, <laughs> wouldn't you be scared shitless at this mm -hmm. point <laughs> mm -hmm. imagine a bunch of wolves like following you in the forest positioning themselves so you're like countdown <laughs> i didn't get a chess analogy so i don't know what they're doing <laughs> no idea i guess they're just walking around me <laughs> right. No, 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 attack is coming. <laughs> so he says, count down to what, David? We're gonna count down to what, David? Like, oh, it's, it's so obvious what it's a countdown to. They're gonna shoot those, like, those, like, gender reveal for the birthday the little kids, like, pink or blue. <laughs> like, no, 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 they're <laughs> aliens. <laughs> yeah. They're, oh, they're positioning, they're not positioning themselves over the countryside. They're positioning themselves right. over your population centers. That's right. With this big, scary, big thing. Well... <sighs> Cool chess analogy, though. Cool. Oh, it's like in chess. First, you strategically position your pieces, and when the timing's right, you strike. I, mean, I think chess is a little more complicated than that because these guys have overwhelming firepower, and they're just positioning themselves overall. <laughs> That's right. It's right. not like some gambit, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no trickery. We just we just hover over you and yeah. shoot, <laughs> and you can't do anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the ends have showed up. Captain Hiller is about to go back to El Toro. What's his soon-to-be wife's name? What's her name? What's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Ah, there it is. In the middle, down low. No. Captain Hiller's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do that. We didn't do that. Yeah, that's her. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Captain Hiller about to go back to El Toro. Uh -huh. the, ali the aliens are attacking. Well, they haven't attacked yet, but they're positioning themselves to attack. Mm -hmm. And I will find it. Uh, what is she upset about? Let's watch. Uh-uh. Come on now. You can't go. You got to call them back. I'm not going to do this with you, Jasmine. I have got to report to El Toro. But you said she was on leave for the fourth. I mean, he's, the leave is canceled. Is this not surprising? <laughs> yeah, it's like the greatest threat <laughs> we've ever encountered. Like, you're on right. leave. <laughs> you were on leave. They said leave. And they cannot cancel leave it. That's canceled. final. Leave is canceled. Yeah. Yeah, well, they canceled it. Look, why are you acting like this? Why? That's why. I mean, he, he's a captain in the, I think he's in, in the Marines. The Marine Corps, yeah. In the he's Marine Corps. He better show up to El Toro. That's right. So when she says, that's why, that's exactly why he's leaving. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> that's why she's accepting. That's why he's leaving. Like, yeah. She should know. Yeah, so interesting. Also, mm -hmm. look how big this thing is. Oh, my God. Like, it's not only... The circumference, I mean, the diameter is huge, but the thick, it's actually very thick. It's also thick. 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 Yep. I mean, the buildings here, 
I mean, it, it would. We we humans are impressed by the pyramids because they're huge. Right. This is this dwarfs all of them. Yeah. Just yeah, unbelievable. A little America moment. Mm. Once again, the LAPD is asking Los Angelinos not to fire their guns <laughs> at the visitor spacecraft. You may inadvertently trigger an interstellar war. It's totally true. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can I can see people shooting. I can imagine it. <laughs> if these aliens came all the way to Earth and small arms fire <laughs> triggers the interstellar war, I mean, right. it's a little oh, sensitive. Blink, blink, blink. <laughs> it's like, oh, we're going down. <laughs> we did yeah. not expect small arms fire. Yeah, right. I see. Would the small arms bullet make it up to the spacecraft? How high do bullets go? I have no idea. I think they would have a significant loss in speed by the time it got up there anyway. Sure. This... This never made sense to me. Yeah. So did they have some kind of universal communication light thing that we're unaware of? Like, I don't even know how to interpret this. Right? Like this this helicopter with those light array, they could equally have been like a big f*** you. Like, I have no idea. We have no idea what light communication would be to these aliens. And, and when they shoot down the helicopter, isn't that an immediate indicator that these these are hostile? That's right. You're not, you're not damaging the spacecraft in any way. That's right. You got no weapons. And they shoot it anyway. That's right. What if these lights actually are very damaging to their internal electronics? So they're like, shit, take it down! Take shoot it down! It down. <laughs> but just on the outside, we couldn't tell. I mean, actually, that could be you're shooting photons at, at right. the aliens. And they could, they could say, well, that's, an, that's a weapon. That's how we shoot our laser things, which are right. photons. You right. guys are just bad at it, but it's yeah. still an attack. It's still an attack. I certainly wasn't damaging the alien spacecraft. The fact that they went, they did overwhelming force shooting right. this thing down. All right. I still don't understand what they were, the president and the military here were thinking. How is this? This clearly says welcome. Yep. If you speak strobe. <laughs> <laughs> this the satellite signal when David explains to the president. This is just this is one of my greatest nerd fantasies. Using your smarts to to talk to the president. Incredible. Let's watch. Let's say that you wanted to uh, coordinate with spaceships on different sides of the Earth. I couldn't send a direct signal, right? The curve of the Earth prevents it. You'd need satellites to relay that signal in order to reach each ship. Well, I found a signal inside our own satellite system. Wait, 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 wait. The, the aliens came all this way with the mothership and the mini motherships and the fighters, but they didn't bring their own deployable satellites? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> they're they're relying on the the humans, the Earth satellite system to communicate. But like, what if what if humans didn't have satellites? Like, that's right. What, actually, what's but even if they did, like, what's stopping them than just floating a few extra motherships around and then just bouncing it off like that's mesh right. network? You don't need many. What but, what are these aliens doing? If they showed up fifty or hundred years earlier, there'd be no satellite network. There's no take coordination. Over. Yeah, they're like, well, I guess we can't attack until they get their satellites. <laughs> Ah, that's why. Maybe oh. that's why they come back fifty years later. Oh, because when the Roswell crash, we didn't have our network set up. Oh, I don't they're know so, why they they're need so it. they're so lazy. <laughs> well, they, can, they can just deploy their own ships and use those relays. Yeah, so weird. Using our own satellites against us. There, and the clock is ticking. Such a nerd fantasy to be like, President, we need. I need yeah. to talk to you. I've figured yeah. out something, and it's going to save America. Mm-hmm. You see, in a speech right now, cancel it. Shut it down. <laughs> I got I got science to say. And science to say, that's right. He's like at a press, press conference. <laughs> yeah. I mean, actually, here, there's a countdown that nobody knew about. That's right. And I also want to say, good thing he had the great visual ready. God damn. That's right. Talk about emotional impact. Can you imagine, like, like, Mr. President, this is something super, super important, but kind of just take my word for it. Right. <laughs> What is gonna happen? Like uh, like thirty-ish minutes, maybe? I don't know. Like I don't know. This gives you that, that emotional oomph. Mm-hmm. Lights a fire under the president's ass to get out of there, and they just get out of there. Thirty minutes. Get the f- out. Twenty-seven minutes, fifty-nine seconds, and thirty-two milliseconds. Yep, get the f- out. Okay. What is this guy doing? Let's take a look. So this is in LA. The 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 baby mothership has just attacked the city, destroying it. There's a guy in this building doing paperwork, we think. So ever since I was a kid, I was like, what is this guy doing? He's like doing filing cabinet work. The world's come to an end. But just this time I watched it, I think he's stealing money. Let's take a look. That's, is that money? Is that money? 
Is that money? I think that's money right there. I think oh, this is a dollar bill money. or a, a dollar bill. That's money. This is a bill. There's the there's the head. There's the face. And there's that outline. This guy. So I always thought he was just like he just wanted to work. He's like whatever. I'm here. They're gonna <laughs> blow over. But he's stealing money. Yeah. yeah. So, so he's in the building trying to steal money before the shit goes down. Get it all up and then leave the city. Oh shit. It doesn't make it in time. So this makes a lot of sense now. Oh, shit. Like he's in here trying oh, to get money. Because he's like, the world's about to fall apart. I want to get a bunch of cash so that I can do some trading. Right. That's hella smart. Uh, super smart. But he, he doesn't make it he in time. It. He missed it. But now I understand what he's Holy doing. Shit. I never noticed that. Yeah. Captain Hiller says that he's not scary, but I doubt it. He seems... It seems... Bluffing. How could you not be scared? How can you not be scared? New men will be the first wave in our counterattack. Our target is to the north, centered above what remains of downtown Los Angeles. You scared, man? No. You? No. Ow! Los Angeles was just destroyed. Look at the size of the circle. That's right. Huge chunk. <laughs> Huge chunk has just been destroyed. And you're like, it's totally fine. Totally fine. I'm not scared. Not worried. World's coming to an end, potentially. And at this point in 1996, when was the last time we had any air-to-air -air combat with like a compatible foe? I, mean, I guess it was World War II, right? Yeah, right. So this is like full of confidence. Like we have no <laughs> yeah. idea what this alien ship can do. That's right. Hmm. I mean, I think you'd be scared. You'd probably be able to overcome it. They're fighter pilots. True, of course. You got to psych yourself up, get right. into it. Right. Yeah. But just thinking like, my, my, my BPM is at 40. Don't worry about it. No. I don't think so. Good acting. <laughs> this is Captain Hiller and his uh, squadron attacking. That, here's the F-18s. They fire their missiles. Here's the enemy ship. And they have these graphics ready to rock. They have the shield graphics ready to go and these little explosion graphics that's right. ready to go. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Why do they have that ready to go? So it's like the first time they're ever going to attack this alien and they just had these blue lines. They knew that the aliens would have some type of shieldy stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, find this intern. Figure out why yeah. did he know? Why did he know that there was going to be shields? Oh, shh. Oh. That person knows information. What's going on? All right. All right. They yeah. had inside intel. Right? Maybe. I don't know. That's weird. Are they a saboteur? I don't know. But the, they're, they're, they're a saboteur. They're an inside man. Except they're like, you know what? They actually need this capability. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to draw this out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is some more shots of Captain Hiller's run and his squadron. I mean, if I was a fighter pilot and I saw this, wouldn't this feel hopeless? I mean, you're going up against a floating mountain. Right. This I mean, is, it's bigger than the mountain ranges around it. That's right. And these are just, 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 little, just little, tiny missiles. Little, little pebbles. Little, Nothing. It just uh, Even if there was not no shields, you're like, there's no way these missiles could do anything but some surface damage. Right. I'm going right. to I'm gonna shoot a missile out of the side of a mountain to get some scratches. Right. Whatever. And then they have shields, so you can't even do surface damage. That's right. It's just how hopeless is this? Super hopeless. Look how big it is. Mm -hmm. Unreal. And then here's this with the side of the ship. Here are the F 18s. There's a little one. That's right. Little one. Look, wait, look wait, at the wait. scale. F 18 F 18 is like the size of a bus, pretty much, right? right? Like, like they're not like cars. They're like, they're, they're big fighter jets. Yeah. And they're this small against the ship. It no would way. just, no way. it would feel hopeless. No like, there's nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. Wow. Jimmy couldn't breathe. I didn't understand. I still don't understand this. We got two on our six, Jimmy Shackle. Roger. Can't shake it. Yes, you can, just the way I showed you. Try something. Man, I don't do nothing stupid over there. You know me. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, what are you doing? You can't make it that speed. Uh, uh, Put your mask back on. I can't breathe. <laughs> So, so what happened to Jimmy here? I he think he panicked. He just, I, he just straight panicked? I think he panicked because everyone in the squadron died except them. Okay. And, and so they were running away. They got these aliens on their back. Mm -hmm. And the aliens have unknown fighting, flight control characteristics. Mm -hmm. And he, he feels like he's going to die. So he tries to do something crazy, which is try to bank. But, but as Captain mm -hmm. Hiller says, you can't do it. 
So that to me says like his brain is not operating right. He's panicking. He's panicking and he's almost resigned himself that he's mm. going to die. Then he tries to take a, a turn too fast. Mm-hmm. He gets a high G, he loses the oxygen. Then he's like ripped off his mask, gets some oxygen. So I think that really is the only explanation. It's just I'm straight guessing. panic. Also, how did Captain Hiller know he took his mask off? What are you doing? You can't bank at that speed. <laughs> How did he know? Wait, that's right. <laughs> How did he know? Is there, like, if you take your mask off in your F-18, does that send back to HQ and the other sh- other fighters that you've taken your mask off? There's, like, a little screen with everybody's <laughs> mask status on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that must be the only explanation. Mm. He panicked, took his mask off, couldn't breathe, resigned himself to death. Yeah, gave up. Kind of sad. Good thing Captain Hiller didn't. In fact, he knocks out one of the alien fighters and gets full of confidence. Let's watch. Oof. That's what you get! <laughs> ah! That's right! Look at you! Who's the man? Ship all banged up! I love it. I mean, yeah, he, he deserves it. He's the only one that killed an right. enemy fighter. Excellent. He, ba- <laughs> he banged up one of their ships and destroyed his own. That's yep. a W. I mean, that's, it's, that's, it's a that's W. A dub. That's a dub, yeah. It is a W. He deserves that confidence. Good for him. Good for him, yeah. Um, yeah, why were nukes controversial at this point? This is after the aliens have attacked the cities. Most of the major metropolitan areas around the world are destroyed. I don't understand why nukes were still not completely on the table. I spoke with the Joint Chiefs. They agree we must launch a counteroffensive with a full nuclear strike. Over American soil. You're saying at this point we should sacrifice more innocent American civilians. Is that... I mean, yes. Right? Am I, am I wrong? I see what you're saying. So, so like, on one hand, you don't want to send nukes because, because that damages the land and the people around. But on mm-hmm. the other hand, like, you're facing extinction. Do right. what you got to do. And, and these craft have shown the ability to destroy whole cities and the willingness to do so. That's right. So yeah, either they're going to get you or the nuke's going to get you, but you got to try, right? They might as well go down fighting. That right. Sir, if we don't strike soon, there may not be much of an America left to defend. That's not, that's not a bad point. That's a very good point. It's not a bad point. We must launch. A delay now would be more costly than when you waited to evacuate the cities. No, no. Oof. You're not going to launch nuclear weapons. You're going to kill them and us at the same time. Okay. Okay, who the... I mean, I like him. A what? Yeah. <laughs> Turns out, because they have shields, you're not going to destroy them and us at the same time. You're just going to destroy us. But worth trying. Worth trying, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, worth trying for multiple angles. When they do nuke the ship, it's mm-hmm. weird. They shoot it from the side. Right. But there's a ship floating over a city. There's mm-hmm. a ship that's a shield to the city. That's right. Why don't you nuke the top? Yeah. All the, the nuclear fall blasts up into the sky. Yeah, it comes mm-hmm. down, but the city's protected. Yeah. Or you, or you mean underneath? Nuke underneath, because then the ship as as yeah. like, like a shield, like a, like a yeah. boiler pot, and just puts the right. pressure in and then builds it up. Right. Get a bigger explosion. So as long as you have nukes available, in my opinion, you should be trying kind of everything. Send it. Send it. Because what do you? What's the alternative? You get destroyed. The alternative is extinction. Right. So I'll send it. So if, if this is another time to use nukes, I really don't know when is. <laughs> when else? When else <laughs> is the time to use an right. alien invasion where they're just decimating us? It's time. It's time. It's time right. to use nukes. Uh, yeah, so this, heart, this heart, scientist is heartless. Let's Classic watch. tropes. Classic. The neatest stuff has only happened in the last few days. See, we can't duplicate their type of power, so we've never been able to experiment. Since these guys started showing up, all the little gizmos inside turned on. The last 24 hours have been really exciting. Exciting? People are dying out there. I don't think exciting is a word I'd choose to describe it. I simultaneously love and hate this trope. Mm-hmm. And that scientists are like always about the data and all we're just obsessed about the data. We don't even care about people's emotions. Mm-hmm. Like I love it because it is pretty true. <laughs> like it's mm-hmm. exciting to get that data mm-hmm. and it's like it's gonna like years of work is coming together. But at the same time, like we're not heartless. Like we're, we're good people. We we care about people. That that's right. I mean, if the world is dying on the outside and your work is super important, there'd be a bit of more of a somber tone. That's right. To sign, even though they're enthusiastic about the work. Mm-hmm. I think there would be a somberness to it. Hmm. And these people have like families, right? Right. They have totally have families. Hmm. These people aren't heartless. No way. No way. So it's a little callous to be like, it's so exciting. Hmm. Um, and the president was right to call him out on that. But I think that trope was taken a little too far there. Kind of annoying. Kind of hurt me a little bit. Kind of annoying. Yeah. 
We're not all heartless. Mm-hmm. I'd love that job though. The job looks awesome. Did you work there? Uh, it's a little cramped, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. So this is a <laughs> laboratory, and it is. It look how many people there are here. I know. Like this is so cramped up for scientists. Like, stop standing over my soldier. I wouldn't my shoulder. I wouldn't be able to work here. It's and this is a clean room. You sort of need lots of space. Keep yeah. things. I mean, I've never worked in a clean room, but I imagine you need lots of a pretty good amount of space to keep things organized and clean. Mm-hmm. And what a waste of space! This whole center section. It's a you can't, bath. can't even use six panel wide walking bath. Right. Weird floor plan and layout, I have mm. to say, mm. for a clean room. Let's watch them enter. Now 24 floors beneath the surface. Let's see it. Open the door. Yes, sir. My God. My God, there's so many people in this room. It's way too many people <laughs> too for many. this working environment. Yeah. And are they all working simultaneously? Like this guy can't come in at a different time? That's right. <laughs> yeah. this, this, there's somebody at this station at all times. <laughs> also, if this is critical clean room work, didn't the president just ruin it? See it. Open the door. Yes, sir. Maybe. So after taking down that alien fighter, Captain Hillary is super confident, but I think he gets too confident. I'll tell you why. That's great! That's what you get! Look at you! Who's the man? Hi. Mr. President, it's Captain Stephen Hiller. Captain, Mr. President. Captain Stephen Hiller takes down the alien ship, no longer salutes the president. Oh, Oh, sh. He's confident. He went in for the handshake. Went in for the handshake. You see it. That's your commander in chief. It's Captain Stephen Hiller. Looks him up and down. Captain, Mr. President. Mr. President. Respectful, but yo, you you need a salute. (laughs) You're a captain. (laughs) Wow. I never noticed that, but that is a hundred percent true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> wow. Well, he did shoot down a. That's right. He's the only person. Guy. He's the only person in the world at this point. He's like chain of command. Fuck you! Fuck you. I am the chain of command. <laughs> Get off my chain. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. Oh, whoa. Talking to the alien. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. He's shooting the president. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> So after this scene, we go into the scientist's place and, <laughs> the scientist, and we see the aliens. I have questions about their anatomy. Couple of they were wearing uh, some sort of biomechanical suits. We learned a great deal about their anatomy. Eyes, ears, no vocal cords. They communicate with each other through some other means. Telepathy. So these aliens, they look kind of humanoid in that they have like eyes and a nose bridge and mm-hmm. cheekbones and stuff. But they definitely look weird and uncomfortable and alien and so so i wondered what is going on with our anatomy mm-hmm. and so in what environment does it make sense to have evolved this type of bodies and then also why do they have these these bio suits these mm-hmm. like armor suits like what did these suits do for them i mean i guess it could be a space suit of some kind like we made uh i guess mechanical suits mm. with material science and pipes and valves and stuff whereas they're like one step beyond many steps beyond us where they make a a biomechanical suit that integrates with the body directly maybe and so it, it seems like like just like how we would need to have environmental suits this mm-hmm. is also that yeah. but then also it's like armor and the insulation and mm-hmm. their breathing apparatus all of it this this picture is that the bottom there's their legs for legs, reference yeah, legs, yeah. So they got these skinny little legs mm-hmm. skinny little arms although long Mm-hmm. Uh, they have this face like on the suit that can oh, open right. up. Yeah. This is face like right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like, if the alien's deep inside there, why does it have eyes? So like, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Like, this is the part of the bio suit that like sees the outside mm-hmm. world and then channels it into to the to to the, to the person or the, the, yeah. the alien. Yeah. And I guess that's that's the entire suit. The entire yeah. suit interacts with the outside world right. and relays information in. In fact, you can kind of see it here. Let's like, see. See, there's the eye on the right. Yeah. Okay, and then it's some, like some maybe breathingy stuff, and Breathe, yeah. it brings it in inside, right. deep in here, deep deep in there is where the where the actual alien's sitting. Right. Um. There's like structural stuff, mm-hmm. bony stuff, and then down in here with his eyes closed, um, without light coming in, mm-hmm. um, the alien's buried in there. And here's its its fingers wiggling around. Mm-hmm. When the eyes open, it's reflective, it's and then it like makes your brain scream and cry. Yeah. 
and then they start climbing out. Yeah. Okay. Let's go go back one. To this one? Yeah. So this is my hypothesis. See how the alien's arms are like tucked in there? Mm -hmm. This is actually a psychically controlled suit. Okay. Okay. So so they have these skinny arms, mm -hmm. like the actual aliens. Can we go back up and look at the test tubes? The test tubes. Or the 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 this yeah, one? these I uh, want more, one more. So they got yeah. these skinny arms. Yeah. Skinny legs, and they're pretty much just a torso and a head. Mm -hmm. And then they make the big the bio suits pretty much the same thing. I guess that's reasonable. Like they make their suits in the same shape as they are, just like we are. Um, but their head shape changes. Like here, the aliens have big eyes, big nose, big cheekbones, this big wide head thing. Um and then and these arms that like hook, they like mm -hmm. hook forward. Same thing with their legs. Maybe we can get see one earlier. Yeah, yeah. See their legs? Yeah. They like they like come forward like normal human legs, but instead of having feet, they have these like curl back things. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we go back lower? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you get this like armored head thing. Yeah. Which is like this big, fat, wide thing. Yeah. Right, right. So so here's the face where you see parts where the eye the the eyes can get information. Maybe mm -hmm. there's some gas exchange from the front, and then they have this big shell thing. Mm -hmm. And so if they're not talking because they don't talk and they communicate via telepathy, I wonder, is this big head part like effectively an antenna? So that way they can like directionalize and point and, and magnify their, their telecommunication. Maybe. 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 And then when we see the suit, we see the suit, it's, yeah, he sits in here and his arms are all tucked in. I think the suit communicates, like he, I think the alien communicates to the suit through telepathy. So it's like okay. a telepathy enhancer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also consistent with, see this like tiny or, or a big beefy torso? Yeah. Tiny little like, like look at the yeah. hips. Yeah, right. like just nothing in there. And so the alien is tucked up in a ball in the head portion, I guess that's what we would call it, right? And then it has these like long torsos coming out. Um, I think also these tentacles, like I think they're also just part of the suit. And then right. they like they like psychically control all the arms. Mm -hmm. So imagine this: imagine like you're an alien going into war, and you like you put on your suit, and you just tuck into a ball, and you have these arms that are controlled and the legs controlled, and then so like you're sitting in a chair, you have all these tentacles that push all the buttons around. Incredible, um, but also also weird. Like let's go to the next image as you had the feet. What are these feet? This like how would you ever stop yourself from falling forward? Um. I assume it's just designed so they don't fall forward. Right, right, right. But I mean, so like the, for the foot, mm -hmm. you could if you if you're falling forward, you could push your toes down, the balance is back. If you're falling backwards, you can step back with your foot, keep your heels down. Mm -hmm. So this way, this looks like they are always prone to falling forward. And and my thought is, they designed it like this, so this must be natural for them. So do they live in some environment where they're like hooked onto things, like? They don't stand all the time. Maybe like, maybe this this joint here will come down to the floor like a heel in stable mode. And then this is spring mode, ready to pounce. Oh, that's very nice. Very cool. Okay, yeah, cool. Do we have any more pictures? That's it. That's it. Cool. Uh, so they abort, and I thought it was uh, premature. Call the other planes back. Why well, the bombers might have more luck, so we shouldn't just give up on this. I said call them back. Abort. Or an abort mission. Issue the abort codes right away. This is an abort. Full abort. So they just launched the nukes. The tank on the ground notices that the alien spacecraft remains. It's fine. And they immediately abandon the nuke idea. Now, of course, Nowitzki here, whatever his name is, he's got such a hard-on for nukes. But I still think he's got a point. Like, don't give up on it. Delegate a team to the nuke idea and then try something else. That's right. Just because something doesn't work the first time doesn't mean it won't work the second time. Right. You could have weakened the ship. Yeah, exactly. Maybe it's one nuke. Maybe it needs like one and a half nukes to like deal the damage. So it's sucked up the first one. You need to give yeah. it a, a second one to right. actually kill it. And you Maybe. don't know. Yeah. Maybe it takes 15 nukes. But sure. We don't know. We're in a low information environment. So I don't think you can give up on it. Yep. Especially considering how many nukes do we have? Thousands? Worth a shot. Worth a shot. Classic 90s moment. Come on, come on, David, David, you need your rest. Come on, get off this freezing concrete floor before you catch cold, come on. What did you say? <sighs> I don't want you to catch cold. Oh! Genius, the talk. 
genius. I mean, his dad's not a genius who came up with the idea. That's right. He just said, don't catch a cold. He said, don't catch a cold because he was concerned about his son. It's, it's, he's the son. The, the, the son is the genius. The put all these other things together. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he pulls the idea of the cold and the alien invasion and all that together. And he calls his dad the genius. It's such a 90s moment. They did this so many times in movies. So fun. So after David Levinson has made the virus, figured out how to take the shields down, he does a ridiculous, dangerous demonstration. The president is in the room. That's right. <laughs> what? Throw a rock. Throw a rock. Heck, throw throw a chair. I, mean, I guess there could be a, a minimum velocity for the shields to turn on, so that if you hit it with a slow moving object, shield just shield just lets it through. Whereas if it's fast, so it needs to be bullet speed, maybe. Maybe. But even if that's the case, let's. Let's get, take five. Get the president <laughs> a bulletproof vest, then try it. Think Let's get him bit. out of the line of fire. That's right. Unbelievable. This scene was always weird to me. Let's watch. Okay. Okay. Get into the mothership. Doors open. All right. No security. All right. Yeah. We're in space. We're not expecting humans to stop here. All right. Yeah. Oh, it takes a long time from the dead. It does take a long time. <laughs> All right. Just cruising. Just cruising through. Laying low. Yeah. Not drawing attention. All right. All right. <laughs> kind of hazy in here. But... All right. Must be that metal fog. Hmm. Actually, it can't be metal fog. It's <laughs> Okay. So interesting. So this craft that they're in is here. It is coming in, coming in. It's fifty years old. It's been broken, and these fighters are so they're attached to the baby motherships, not to the mothership out in space. They're deployed by the little baby motherships. So we have this tiny little fighter. It's fifty years old, according to the aliens, flying alone up to the mothership. That's right. Why is the door open for them? <laughs> That's right. The mother should be like, why are you here? Go to, go to your baby mothership. Why are you, why are you here? Right. Not only that, it's like, it's like a ship that had disappeared 50 years ago. And they're like, we're back. Yeah. Hey, hey, what's up? Hey. No, 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 no. Where have you been? <laughs> yeah. Even if you're like, this is probably okay. Shut the door. Shut the door. And then put them in like a, you know, dock shut, them somewhere. Shut the door. So you say, stop outside. We'll come check on you. Right. So He's weird. Like, the alien's like, all right, you come, look like... Come all the way into the middle. Come in the middle. Seems fine. <laughs> yeah, so... You've been weird. gone for a while, but it's been 50 years. Are you still alive? Like, all right, come on in. Whatever. Sure. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the door's open. They come in. They got all the codes. You know, mm -hmm. crazy. Go, let's check out. Um, so David Levison starts the upload of the virus. How do the people down in co the command center still know? How do they know this? There's time to Sir, he's uploading the virus. That's right. Hey, uh, they're they're in space and in the mothership. So and then down on Earth, they're like, "Yep, yeah, send so it." How far away are they from the command center? And plus, they're in this huge thing. I don't know if it's made out of metal. Probably, that is probably just mass. It's just blocking the radio waves that would do do the communication. And they're transmitting back to Earth inside the mothership. They're trying to get themselves away. That's right. Shouldn't the mothership be like? There's a signal coming from inside me. <laughs> what is, what is <laughs> what this? Is this? <laughs> yeah, like how? Mm. Wow. Weird. Okay. Somehow they know. So they start a fight. They said the, the humans start a fight with the aliens, and then they send a missile, and they immediately disengage. Let's watch. Virus in effect is disengage. Hold on, command. Sir, I strongly recommend you disengage. Eagle One, Fox Three. Fire at will, fire at will, fire at will. So weird that they were like, disengage, disengage. It's like, what other plan do we have? That's let's, right. Let's take this <laughs> one to the, the finish line here, but people. Like, There's no backup plan. That's like It's like saying, <laughs> like, I, I swung my axe at a tree once and it didn't go down. Yeah. Give up. Give up. It's got bark on it. It's worth... Trying again and again and again. Maybe it's... I mean, there's no alternative Especially plan. Especially there's no backup plan. There's right. no other option. 
Right. Yeah. This is the last stand. Also, time to stand. Another perspective here. Doesn't this look so hopeless right here? Oh my gosh. It's so big. And yeah. shields, and yeah. it's just so tiny. And they're doing something technologically that humans cannot do. Right. Just can float like that. Right. And then you see the explosion when this actually gets through the shields. It's just so Ding. tiny. It's, it's nothing. Yep. Like even if you had super damage, you could get like a 20 foot hole maybe. Right. It's just so enormous. You don't have enough. You don't have enough missiles to deal damage to this thing. Right. And it's... Never a chance. So why aren't nukes on the table at this point? It should, should be on the table, especially shields are down. Shields are down. How is this? I wonder why this wasn't discussed um, before, where it's like, okay, shields come down. Maybe we should nukes back on the table. Right. 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 Because what what else do we have in the arsenal that could take down something so big? Heck, even if you can't kill it, but you blow enough big enough a hole in the bottom, like there's your vacuum seal. That ship's never leaving Earth. Right. Fuck you, die with me. And you might be able to take out at least its main gun, which is doing sure. most of the damage. And it would be like. Send in 50 nukes. I mean, I don't know. Why not? Why not? With the shields, it seems like they can survive it. But without the shields, I think nukes are the way to go. I mean, just because it's so small. Yep. So small. Wild. Just, yeah, so hopeless. Yeah. I mean, but this look at, look how much space there is between the bottom and the ground. Right. Not a lot. Not a lot. Which means if you were to put a nuclear weapon in there, yep. the gas expansion... It would go into the ship. It would like reflect up and down a exactly. bunch. You, and that it would just be, it would be hard for the ship to handle that. Right. It would act as if you were putting like a dynamite inside a, inside a steel box. It just, it compounds the pressure and makes it explode that much harder. Right. This is the perfect time to use nukes. Perfect time. Yeah. Because the shields are down. But this is so hopeless with just missiles. Look at these tiny little explosions. Plus they have fighters to deploy. Actually, so I thought about this. This looks out of scale. Because we saw earlier how the F-18s look tiny. Mm -hmm. These explosions are not missiles from the F-18s. So, so actually, these should be even smaller even than smaller. what's here. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what does the president lock on to here? Let's take a look. Locking on. I've got to. Eagle One. Fox Two. I mean, look at this. What? 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 The what ship? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, what, is, what, is, what is there to lock on yeah. here? I mean, maybe one of the fighters, but that's, not what, fighters, you, that's not what you the want. The entire sky. Right. Or the outside of one of these leaf petals. Yeah, it has to be locking on one of the leaves. Right. What else that, can you lock on? That's It's a primer. That's an emitter. It's a flat face toward you. Mm -hmm. I mean, a reflector for radar. Mm -hmm. So he's reflecting radar off one of the petals, I mean, locking he, onto the petal. He can't see the gun from here, right? Like the big old laser from the top. He can't no, see wait, that from it, here. No, no, wait. It's like up in here. And but if, it's, it, like if behind, it, but it's like it, behind the petal. It would be behind the petal if it's like... So, so I think we're saying he locked onto the petal. Yeah. Does he hit the pedal? He hits the pedal. He hits the pedal. So that's a successful hit. It's a successful lock on. He locked on exactly where he hit it. He just didn't right. aim up. So he's like, I got a lock. Boop, done. Boop. But oh, the, it, see, the, the main gun isn't even deployed yet. That's right. Yeah, how could he lock so, on to the main gun? It hasn't even been set up. Yeah, so it needs to like come downward. Extend. Extend downward mm -hmm. first. Get prime so, its pump. That's a bad decision. Blast. Yeah, okay. That's right. All over Area 51. So this is how the drunk father takes out this the huge the, baby mothership. The final attack, the one that breaks down the mothership. How much precision is needed to do this? Not only in space, but in time. Come on. Wow. America. Really? Walk <laughs> fast. Got him. All oh, the fighter jets. Okay, fantastic. I love it. love it. But at the same time, you have to hit this right when it's firing. You can't be off to the side. You can't be too high, because if too high, you crash into it before it shoots. Right. Too low, it just kills you. You really right. got to be just right at the tip right. and at right at the right time. Right. Because I think if you come in, you have, to, you have to do it right when it's firing, so you get that back blast. Right. If you're too early or too late, you're not going to get the back blast. Yeah, if you're too early, you crash into it and it never shoots. If you're too late, it shoots you before you get to it. Right, and you're just vaporized. So that means that they tell everyone else in the world to do exactly right. that? And they pull it off. But the thing is, the, this is easily countered. First, the first counter is never fire your main weapon. 
as the alien. That's right. So then the F-18, they just crash into it, and you're like, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess you could just close the leaves. That's right. And then just send out the fighters. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and now you just have this big thing running around the Earth planet, killing everything. It's going to take a long time, but... But they're know. already dominating. Right. All right. The other thing is, with the fighters, you could send out the fighters first, clear the skies, just destroy everything in the skies, and have them patrol completely so no F-18s or any fighters can get close to it, then open the pedals, then fire. It's an easily countered thing, but the aliens are so dumb. They're so dumb. Without look. the mothership, they have no idea what they're doing. Right. Look, look, look at, at this. all these places. This is Area 51. This is some place. Looks like Kilimanjaro. I so think so. Kenya. Yeah. They're able to take it out. This is Egypt. They're able to take it out. This is Australia. So this is how they took it down with this precision attack. And the aliens didn't communicate with one another. It's like, don't fire the main gun, people. <laughs> they're like, they're like, this is what happened to us you guys don't do it like no they're like mm, we're all independent we do it yeah, we do it we do it anyway i mean not only did they find this but the humans we executed flawlessly fantastic Perfect. not a single baby mothership survived just every one single one of them bam right. bam bam 100 <laughs> percent. and then the glory mm. Mm. i want a flight suit i want to be them yep i want to be them i want to be them i really want to be them i want to be them friendship Winning. Yeah, winning. Mm. Heroes of all of humanity. Mm. Yes, America. So that was Independence Day. Yep. So what we learned is July 4th will always be our Independence Day. And this is a, the best Friday night movie. Or Saturday. I'd also watch it on Saturday. Saturday. Of all time. I'm, we're saying it. You throw this on, everybody has a great time. Mm. Ah. Welcome to Earth. <laughs>